We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding, Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you entered. God bless you. Once again, Dr. Shee from Pastor of Interceding Christian Center, located 414 Thompson Avenue in the city of West Memphis. To God Almighty be the glory. I'm standing here in the middle of the Smoky Mountains, just thinking of the majesty of God Almighty. And God dropped into my spirit something I want to minister to you this morning that's entitled Faith Over Fate. Many of us are fatalistic. But God says we are to have faith. So let's go into the Word and let's see what God has to say in the sermon that's entitled Faith Over Faith. Was Hezekiah sick unto death? And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine in house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah, after listening, then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember me now, the Lord, I beseech thee. I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days. 15. Amen. Let me minister to you for a little while from a topic the Lord dropped into my spirit. Speaking called Faith Over Faith. Faith Over Faith. <laughs> my God, my God. F A I T H over F A T E. We have so many people in the body of Christ who allow their doubts and their fears to rule their lives. They allow their doubts and their fears to hinder the blessings that God has said that they could have. We have the story of the children of Israel when the 13 spies came back with an evil report. And because they had fear and allowed fear to cause them to present God an evil report, it showed that they lacked faith in God. They lacked faith in God. As I said, I want to minister to you this sermon is titled Faith Over Faith. Faith Over Faith. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Well, Two words that sound similar to each other, but yet they are so different in so many different ways. One word has five letters. Uh, both words have, uh, one word has four letters. Both words have X. Both words have a vowel in them. Uh, both words even have T's in them. But these two words mean something entirely different. Let me define those words for you. What is faith? Scripture gives us many differing same, approaches to exactly what faith is, but, but those scriptures all lead to one simple truth. That simple truth, if you put it simply, faith is believing in God. Now, faith goes beyond your physical senses uh, to capture what your eyes have not seen and compel those things that your eyes have not seen into manifestation. With faith, you are able to speak those things as not as if they already were. If you want a blessing from God, you have to got to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith has a way of illuminating things, causing things to come into being. Uh, it's no wonder that the psalmist wrote saying, uh, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path. Now, looking at this, we realize that uh, uh, to know that God does order our steps in his word. Looking at this, we know that our feet are ordered and our feet have lamps on them when we're into, in the Lord. And the lamps of our ordered feet 
walk the path that God has for us to walk. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, what is faith in comparison? What is faith in comparison? F-A-T-E. Faith is an expected outcome that is driven by a belief that God is not in control. Huh? From the root word faith comes the word fatal. From the root word faith comes the word fatalistic. Comes the uh, uh, comes the word fatality. Comes the word faith belief. If if you're fatalistic, you expect death. But when you have faith in God, death is one of the last things on your mind. Though you know that you will pass through death, you know that God is going to ensure that He meets you at that point and ushers you into his presence. Let's face it though, some people are fatalistic. They believe the worst and that draws the worst to them. It, it, it bothers me when people are pessimistic, the glass is half full. It bothers me, uh, people are pessimistic, they say the sky is too blue, the, the water is too wet, uh, salt is too salty, sugar is too sweet. Uh, and it's, it's bad enough to deal with that with the unsaved, but when you have people who are in the church who have fatalistic outlooks, who are pessimistic in their terms, amen. When you deal with people in the church that say that they believe the word of God, they trust the word of God. When you deal with people in the church that can quote Romans 8 and 28 from memory, uh, uh, that all things work together for their good, they can quote Jeremiah 29 11, uh, saying that God has great plans for them. It really bothers me when, when they say these things, but they have a fatalistic approach to life. Listen, listen. I was talking to a preacher one day and and the weather was too hot for him, the, the food was too cold. He was sure that he would die of some dreaded disease. Uh, his members were, wasn't going to give like they should give. His wife was going to leave him and his dog would, would leave him as well and bite him on his way out. It was one terrible condition after another. See, faith, F-A-T-E, will have you walking in fear. Giving fear a breathing ground. Uh, uh, giving you a fear a place to operate. Giving fear a place to thrive. Faith causes the the ground to be fallow uh cause the ground to be unworkable let me bless somebody with this word walking in faith and not in faith is a dangerous thing faith are the shoes which carry generational curses uh a generational curses carried on not so much by the disposition of the person as much as it's carried by the words that are spoken from a fatalistic person amen uh speaking unto your children saying your daddy wasn't good then you would never be no good uh i mean speaking unto him saying saying your daddy was a rolling stone uh uh, uh so you're going to be the same as him your your mama was uneducated unsaved abused herself uh so you will be the same the enemy whispers or the oblos things to us he whispers or diablos, he throws things in our direction. And if we pick up on those things, we can cause certain things to be drawn unto us. Life and death is surely in the power of the tongue. Oh, hallelujah. So when the enemy throws these things at us, this is why the word tells us to bring every thought under subjection. Because every thought that comes to us is not a thought that God has for us. Amen. But it's something that the enemy throws at us. Amen. 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 The enemy throws these things at us so he'll try to make these things take root in our lives. Amen. And and those things that he throws at us become what's called strongholds. Uh, 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 faith says general uh, generationally faith says generationally that you should be an alcoholic it says generationally you should be a whoremonger it says generationally you should be dead and i'm speaking of myself here it says generationally you should be in hell or in jail uh, but god but god mm -hmm. hallelujah god has a way of sowing seeds of faith inside of us uh, which allows that discord that the enemy's throwing at us not to even land, not to right. even stick. And right. we're, when we trust God with our faith, then faith has no place. When we trust God with our faith, then we are resisting the enemy. What happens when we resist the enemy? He flees us. He does not want to deal with our faith because our faith is a powerful thing. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh my God, my God. Listen, listen. Now, don't get faith, faith and prophecy mixed up. F-A-T-E and prophecy mixed up. Prophecy can be, can be in every world, but also prophecy can be driven by choices. Can be driven by choices. Ahab, the faithless king of Israel, the husband of Jezebel was given a prophecy concerning his death and also a prophecy concerning how God would restore him if he repented. Mm -hmm. So prophecy has what we call the ifs and thens, the ifs and thens. And, and God does deal with if and thens on certain things. He deals with if and thens. He, he, he allows us to be blessed inside of his perfect will, Amen. but the perfect will of God is encompassing. The perfect will of God allows the permissive will to be inside of it. And if we're bouncing around inside of the perfect will of God, as permissive will will do, the thing is that, look, God says it, that sells it, it's going to happen. Uh, you can either say, Yes, Lord, I will do it, or yes, Lord, I'll do it. It's up to you. That's but right. it will be done. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. That's right. That's so right. prophecies has ifs and then mm -hmm. that operate within it. Whereas faith states that no matter what you do, no matter what you do, you are doomed to a certain outcome. Oh, I'm gonna say that again. That touched me, my God. Prophecy, prophecy has ifs and thens that operate within it. Whereas faith states that no matter what you do, that you cannot change the outcome of your situation. And that is not scripturally true. That is not scripturally true. The same as faith, same as faith is a powerful thing, be it thought or spoken, so is faith. Life and death resides in the tongue. But it will not come from the tongue unless it's in your mind. If it's in your mind that you're going to fail, then you can count on failure. If it's in your mind that you're going to succeed, then you can succeed. But the thing about it is that we have to have what is called uh, now faith that is found in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance that, that, that deals with more than just the power of faith. But it says when faith is when faith is hallelujah hallelujah see see you doubt you when you doubt you're countering your faith when you doubt you operate in faith the opposite of faith is doubt don't counter your faith jesus said if you ask anything in my name and not doubt if you want to ask anything in my name and not doubt that is saying let not your life be ruled by doubt don't let your life be ruled by doubt. I like how the Apostle Paul put it where he says that we need to think on good things. We need to think good things about people. We need to good, think good things. And this is not saying to allow yourself to be so inundated with yourself and what you think, whereas you see the world through rose-colored glasses. No, this is telling you that even when something does not look like it's supposed to look, you're supposed to speak to it and tell it what it's supposed to look like. Jesus did this with blind Bartimaeus. He did not call him blind Bartimaeus. He called him Bartimaeus, son of a nobleman. He spoke what Bartimaeus should be, even though Bartimaeus didn't look nothing like it should be. Oh my God. And the Lord says the same thing with you in your life. He speaks to what you should be, how you should be, even when you don't look nothing like you should be. Hallelujah. Oh, glory unto God. I told you before, God answers faith. He answers faith. For it says, without faith is what impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. That is what I am. This is why I have such radical faith. This is why yeah. I can see. Uh, a trash building and clean it out and see a sanctuary, a place of worship, a place of baptism, a place, an edifice to worship and to glorify God, a place to lead people through the sinner's yes, prayer yes, into a relationship with God. Hallelujah. This is why I have such radical faith. Uh, hallelujah. Yes. I want to be pleasing unto God. So, so I see the best of the worst and I strive to bring the best out of the worst because in every single coal mine, there is a diamond waiting to 
be discovered in every single rock hallelujah in a mine there's a piece of gold 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 mine there's a piece of gold that is ready to be polished that's ready to be brought up to the surface but if you have a fatalistic outlook then you're not able to see the diamond in the raw you're not able to see the diamond in the piece of coal you're not able to see hallelujah that gold inside of a, a river bed of river rock you're not able to see those things hallelujah oh call me crazy but i believe god i believe god I believe that God is still up to something, hallelujah, even when we're in a world where we're facing all of these negative things that are going on around us, even in a world where where people are running afraid of the viruses and such like, even, even in that world, I believe that God is up to something, but God does not work the way that we work. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. God does not work how we work. God works different from how we work. Oh, my God, my God. Call me crazy, but I believe that God is up to something. And you haven't seen the worst of things, but you definitely have not. You're definitely not going to fail. You're definitely not going to falter. God is going to ensure that you are provided. Huh? Hallelujah. Look back on days of old when you thought that you were not going to make it. Look back when the gas prices were extremely high. You're still able to drive. Look back when food prices were extraordinary, but you were still able to eat. We serve a God who's a substance. Sustaining God, a God who's able to bring the best out of a worse situation. We serve a God who's able to help you and to bring life out of death. We serve a God who is able, my God, my God. And how does God want us to operate? He wants us to operate in faith. Faith. He wants every aspect of our lives to be done in faith. Done in faith. Let's examine a few scriptures. Ephesians 2 and 8 says this. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. See, faith is needed for salvation. You can even get the blessings of Holy. You can't even get the blessings of Holy Spirit unless you have faith. Unless you have faith. Unless you hear. Oh my God! Your faith has to extend itself to accept grace for the salvation of huh? Romans 5 and 1 said therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ huh? you are in right standing with God by having nothing else except for faith you don't have to be perfect in your walk yeah. Oh my God, when you come into the church, you don't have to have the right clothes on. You don't have to have the right lingo or even understand scripture. But if you have just enough faith and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are justified by your faith. We have peace through God because of our faith through, through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are not right in right standing with God, with God by anything other than the grace of your faith when you are justified in god through christ your inheritance to come before the throne of grace is assured uh, I, I like what it says in matthew 5 and 18 for real i say unto you to heaven and earth pass away one jot or one tittle shall not why pass from the law until all be fulfilled this word tells us that god's word is true it says that God's word will accomplish what God's word says that it will accomplish. This should be a jolt to our faith. This should be a jolt to our faith. For it refers to the scripture which says that God's word will not return unto him void. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, some, some say you can't change your outcome, but I can point to many stories, story after story, of how people's outcome was changed when they changed their way of thinking. When they began to speak, faithfully on things when they begin to work toward things see when you have faith f-a-t-e as your moral compass then you begin to work toward fatalistic outcomes you prepare for the worst in in the presence of what god says is going to be your best year you prepare for what you feel is going to be your worst year what's going to be your worst year i can point to story after story in the bible where god says if you change your ways you will change your outcome you will change your outcome. To change your outcome, you have to change your mind. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. To change, to change your mind, you have to 
hear the word of God. You have to receive the word of God. You have to believe the word of God. You have to recite the word of God. You have to re rehearse the word of God. You have to meditate on the word of God so that what comes from your mouth is just that. The enemy sits around in ear hustles waiting for you to say something that is contrary to what the word of God says. Then he goes into the court of God and he accuses you of not having faith. He accuses you of not having faith. And when he goes in there and accuses you and it's true, you're not having faith, then it releases him. It gives him the privilege of interfering with your life in many ways. Hallelujah. You are given grace and you are justified by your faith, by your faith. In the story above, King Hezekiah was a great king, but he did not resign himself to the prophecy as his faith, as his faith. What he did was he said, God, I've been there. I've had a heart for you. So we have to understand that Hezekiah had an evil father, and his evil father built up idolatry in Israel itself build up idolatry in Israel. Hezekiah had an evil son, Manasseh, who rebuilt the idolatry, but Hezekiah during his reign tore down idolatry. Hezekiah during his reign was a faithful king. He was a king who listened to the words of the prophets, amen. He listened to what the prophets had to say. He cried out unto God in his faith, and said, Lord, I have done this, I have done that. And it wasn't a, an arrogant way, but he cried out to God in his faith and said, Lord, I, I'm not ready to go. I'm not ready to go. I still have some things to do. And Hezekiah, while Hezekiah was crying out with his face to the wall, we have Isaiah who's walking away from the palace, walked out of the throne room, walked into the courts of the palace. And as he's walking into the courts of the palace, God Almighty spoke to him and told him to return. I'm sure that he did not hear, he did not hear Hezekiah's prayer. He did not hear what Hezekiah was saying to God, but God spoke to Isaiah and said, go back and tell him, I'm going to give you more time. Why? Because Hezekiah did not cry out in faith. Hezekiah did not cry out in faith. Hezekiah cried out in faith. Hezekiah did not cry out saying that, oh my God, uh, uh, okay, let me prepare for my funeral. No, he cried out in faith faith saying God I want some more time uh, hallelujah hallelujah Hezekiah cried out in his faith and when he cried out in his faith Isaiah was tapped on the shoulder by the Lord God Almighty and told return to him huh he said return to him he had already told Hezekiah I have seen your tears and I know that your tears are tears of truth. Your tears are tears of sincerity. Your tears are tears of pain and anguish. Your tears are being cried out because you trust me, that you believe me, huh? hallelujah. Hezekiah allowed his faith to bring God to remembrance. Your faith allows you to pray the word back to the Father. Your faith allows you to put the word back into his remembrance because God always looks over his word. Hallelujah. Your faith shows your belief in God. Your faith, huh? and the scripture said, not one diddle, not one dibble, not one piece of God's word is going to fall unto. It has been fulfilled. Faith finds, faith captures, and faith returns the blessings to your family. While faith, while faith is different, faith is lost. And if it stumbles on the blessings, it's trampled by the curses, which are blocking the blessings from being released. Uh, faith, faith positions you for blessings while faith positions you for curses. Uh, faith positions you for life while faith positions you for death. Faith justifies you while faith places you underneath the curse. In the story, I, uh, Hezekiah, in the story uh, in Isaiah, Hezekiah, one of the great kings, was obedient unto God Almighty. So we got to learn to stop spinning our wheels in faith. Mm -hmm. We got to stop spinning our wheels in faith. Mm -hmm. Our faith has to be over everything that the enemy throws us. We have to have faith over fear. We have to have faith over having a futuristic attitude. We have to have faith over frustration. We have to have faith over all things that the enemy throws. We have to have faith 
so that God can bless and keep us the way we got to stop spinning our wheels because our lack of faith equates to having ball tires which don't have any grip. The same faith that comes by hearing, doubt comes by the same way. It comes by the same way when we hear the word of God, it should build our faith. When we hear the words of the enemy, it builds our faith. It builds our faith. Faith comes by the renewing of our mind. So as a man thinketh, so is he, so is he. Unless his mind is not renewed, if his mind is not renewed, then he will not see that God wants us to have faith. When you have faith over faith, you can be like Yonder Adam, you can sing and you can cry your last tear yesterday. Uh, you, your, your faith today, your faith today will build your self-esteem over faith, over faith. Your faith is determined by your choices, beloved. It's determined by your choices, and your choices are driven by your faith. So in essence, your faith determines your faith or your end state. It determines where you're going to end up. Beloved, I'm encouraging you today to have faith in God. I'm encouraging you today not to allow the lies, the tricks, the manipulation of the enemy to cause you to come out some kind of way. I'm encouraging you today to believe God even though you don't see it. Hallelujah. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We cannot walk by faith. If we walk by faith, then we're going to walk ourselves right into the pits of hell. And we're not going to be just only in the pits of hell when we pass on, but we're going to walk through hell while we're on our way to hell. My God, my God. Look, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then let the good report be about you that by your faith, God was able to bring someone to Christ. By your faith, God was able to restore someone. By your faith, God was able to heal you or heal someone. By your faith and not your faith. Faith over faith. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'm speaking to you right now, no matter where you are in your life, whatever, no matter what you may have done in your past, I'm here to tell you that God is able. Not only is God able, God is willing to keep you. He's willing to bring you back into a righteous path with Him. And this is going out to not just those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but this is going out to those who have known Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they've walked out of relationship for whatever reason. This is going out to you as well. Beloved, and understand this, that God is able and He's willing to forgive you. It's a simple prayer, Father, forgive me. I have sinned. Father, keep me. Father, allow me to return into your presence. It's, it's really a simple prayer. I renounce the ways of this world. I uh, pronounce to this world that Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. It's really a simple prayer. And nothing else that the church ever does is more important than just that simple thing to get people saved. That's the most important thing that the church ever does. It's not it's not relegated upon how many anniversary services you have, how many this day or that day you have, how many church picnics you attend, how, how often you attend Bible study. No, the most important thing that the church can do is to bring people into the fellowship of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for this day. We give you glory and honor, Lord God. We pray that this word, Lord God, would take root in someone's life. That someone, Lord God, will be saved, restored, and brought into your presence by this word here, Lord God. Lord God, let not, Lord God, vain repetition. Let not our minds, Lord God, be stayed upon ourselves. But Father God, I'm praying for each and every pastor, each and every minister that's ministering somewhere today, Father God. That, Lord God, they will know the importance of the weight that they carry. And Lord God, that they will not allow, Lord God, this world, Lord God, to speak to them as much as they allow you to speak into the right way. I give you glory and praise for this word today, and I give you glory and praise for all who are listening in and all who will listen in in the future. And I thank you for all things. It's in the master's name of your son, Jesus. I pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Listen, beloved.
If the Lord so touched your heart and you want to be a blessing to Interceding Christian Center, you can be a blessing to Interceding Christian Center by going to our, uh, our cash app, which is dollar sign interceding cc cash app dollar sign interceding cc and be a blessing to us that way or you can be a blessing to us by going to giveify download giveify going to give by download it see the beautiful picture of my wife first lady tina shaper and be a blessing to us in that way as well this work will go on this work must go on this work must go on because we are truly truly in the last days. So this work must go on for the purpose of getting people saved. Hallelujah. To God Almighty be the glory, praying that God will bless you and keep you on this day and any day beyond. Hallelujah. I pray that you enjoyed the word today. And that it touches you within a deep place in your heart. And it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.